Welcome to Inform Sources on News Channel 3, where we talk about the week's big stories with local voices. I'm your host, Greg Hurst. Thanks so much for joining us. Tonight, we're focusing exclusively on Mississippi politics, including the largest teacher pay raise in the Magnolia State's history. Salaries will jump by an average of $5,100 a year, which is an increase of more than 10%. Also tonight, we'll discuss the new election integrity bill that was signed into law by Governor Reeves. That bill aims to prevent any agency or state or local officials from accepting private funds for election related expenses. But first, tonight's hot topic, the largest tax cut in Mississippi history. This week, Governor Reeves signed a bill that will reduce the state income tax for some over four years beginning in 2023. Now, supporters believe this tax cut will stop people from leaving the state and could actually help attract more businesses. It positions us to be competitive in attracting young people and retaining our, our citizens. It also makes us competitive in, in trying to attract new jobs and industry. We can now go out and market ourselves as having the fifth best marginal tax rate in the country. Now, opponents say reducing the income tax would mean less money for schools, health care, roads, and other services. Now, before we begin our discussion, let's introduce tonight's panel. We're happy to have with us Mississippi State Representative Hester Jackson McCray of Horn Lake and State Representative Brady Williamson of Oxford. Thank you both so much for joining us. We're looking to a lively discussion. Thank you for Thank having us. You know, Representative McCray, let's start with you tonight, if we can. Some may be surprised that you actually voted for this. I know many of your Democratic colleagues voted against it. Why did you support it? Uh, which one, the income tax? Yes, the, the largest tax cut in state history. Um, I, 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 there's an advantage and disadvantage of this, but for the working people, um, it, it, it puts more money in their pocket. And with inflation like it is now, with high uh, food costs and gas costs, uh, that extra money is uh, very much needed now. Now, Representative Williamson, Mississippi still has to pay its bills. How will the state replace those tax dollars? Well, in the, in the past year, we've had over $1.3 billion in state revenue over and above our expectations. Uh, there's many reasons for that. Some of it is our state's economic predict productivity and some of it is is other factors but um with that said in the last three years the freedom caucus the house leadership speaker gunn the governor and grassroots have worked hard hard to eliminate our income tax um which i call the penalty on production and just like when you're trying to attract businesses to your area economic development is triggered by reduction in taxes and that's better for everybody. So it, it helps the whole state. Uh, reducing the income tax helps every productive citizen in the state. Now you did mention that you, know, you worked hard to eliminate the state income tax. Do you see a point where you believe that the entire population will benefit from this, from this big tax cut? Absolutely. Uh, it, you know, we, we have seen throughout other states and in recent history that reducing the penalty on production increases production and brings additional revenue to the state. So we will, we will definitely be successful in the long run. It, it, it's a no brainer. You put money back in the hands of the producers, you're gonna have more production. Representative McCray, who do you think will actually benefit from this tax cut? Uh, working people, working men's and women. Um, they'll have that extra money where the state won't be taking that money out of the check so it'll be more in their pockets. And you're there in Horn Lake. What are you hearing from your constituents about this vote? Uh, it was okay, especially from my working uh, uh, constituents. They they love it. And Representative Williamson, I know we talked about how this might help the state become more competitive and perhaps even draw more businesses to the state. How could that happen? Well, you take you take businesses on the state line uh, up in uh, Representative McCray's district and and others up there when they can that they can live in one state or, or the other and have the same salary but less um, less taxes then that's essentially an increased salary so when states are are making decisions whether they live in Alabama or Mississippi or Tennessee or Mississippi or Arkansas or Mississippi or any of the other states that is a factor and representative McCray how do you think the state's going to be able to afford this to make this cut and still pay its bills 
Uh, as Representative said, you know, uh, Mississippi has an excess of money, and uh, I, I think they'll be able to, to put this money back where it belongs. Um, and as he said, we have, uh, we can um, <clears throat> recruit more business in here with our, um, with our no tax thing. New companies are coming, uh, I know to DeSoto County, Amazon, Google's, all those companies, and that's tax, that's tax money that's coming into the state of Mississippi. Now, when you talk to you, some of your Democratic colleagues who oppose this, why did they say they were against it? Um, uh, the state thought that the small communities uh, would have a disadvantage of that since they don't have uh, so much revenue in their communities uh, to um, compensate the, uh, the tax revenue. And Representative Williams, do you think this is going to mean less money for schools and health care and roads? Well, the the tax cut just this year is 150 million. Um, in the long run, it would be a half a billion dollars reduction in tax. That's not uh, to say that there's an overall decrease in revenue, which we're fighting for that revenue to be spent on core functions of government every day. Um, like I said, that we had 1.3 billion dollar of unanticipated revenue over and above expectations this past year. So the cut could have been more significant, especially if some of our, our spending um, decisions this year would have changed a little bit. Now, you did mention that you think that this is going to be phased in. Uh, at what point do you think that this will be phased in for a state income tax for all taxpayers? How long do you think that'll be before they actually see that? I can't say exactly, but I hope it's during my tenure. I hope it's during my term and my service to the state. And it will be one of the greatest thing that we can, things that we can do for our, our citizens is to uh, reduce the penalty on production, which is the income tax. All right. So we'll totally eliminate it. All right. And when we come back from a tax cut to raises for teachers, we'll take a look at the state's plan to give educators a boost in pay. That's coming up next on Informed Sources. Hey, hey, y'all. Hey, y'all hey, doing? Good. I'm going to just adjust your camera here a little bit. Awesome. All right, thank you. Come in a little bit.
Welcome back to Inform Sources. Teachers in Mississippi will soon be seeing more money in their paychecks. Governor Tate Reeves recently signed a bill giving teachers their largest pay raise in state history. Salaries will go up by $5,100 a year on average, bringing the base salary to around $41,500. Governor Reeves says this is proof the state is investing in teachers. This legislation is a stake in the ground that proudly declares Mississippi's enduring commitment to supporting our educators and supporting our educational system. Teachers assistants will also receive a $2,000 raise over the next two years. Representative Williamson, I believe that you were one of only uh, six lawmakers who voted against this. Why? Well, we love our teachers and my kids um, are at local public schools here in Lafayette County and here in Lafayette and Panola County, we have great schools. They deserve a pay raise for sure. But to do so in a manner that gives the worst of the worst, the same as those who bust their butt for our children, is just unsound. If you own a business, you seek to reward those that are doing, going beyond the norm. You, you don't give a blanket pay raise to every employee. If you do, you lower the norm. You discourage the production, the producers in the school system if you give a blanket pay raise. So I, although I'm very glad that our teachers are getting a pay raise, it's just not sound principle to, to give it across the board with no merit involved. So what are you suggesting? Are you saying that there should be some type of teacher evaluation system? Absolutely. Every, every state and public employee should have an evaluation system. And, and in part, that's, that's come from the local communities. Um, all of these communities, all of these districts had the power to pay their teachers whatever they wanted before this was initiated. And some school districts, such as Lafayette's, and others were already uh, being competitive across the state. So, it, yes, no matter what the state employee is, we do need to have some checks and balances. And Representative McCray, I know you voted for this. Why do you think it's important? Well, as you know, I ran my campaign on saving our schools and uh, paying our teachers and retaining our teachers. Uh, the increase in this salary of the teachers pay will hopefully retain uh, our teachers because Mississippi was losing a lot of great teachers to surrounding states uh, just to uh, get paid well. So why not increase their salary so they can stay in Mississippi, work in Mississippi, buy in Mississippi, you know. And what do you think about Representative Williams suggest Williamson's suggestion that the teachers should be evaluated before they get that pay raise? To get, get well, it only to the best of the best. No, I don't think so. You know, the pay raise that Mississippi was getting was one of the lowest, the lowest paying salaries for teachers in Mississippi. And when you have a teacher that's um, a teacher, and then she has to get two or three jobs in order to survive, pay her student loan or his student loan back, uh, that's not fair to them to work so hard of uh, becoming a teacher, and now you get a salary where you can't even live off of. Representative Williamson, what do you think, what kind of, of impact do you think this will have on education and perhaps more importantly on students? Well, a blanket pay raise uh, across the board to the worst of the worst, as well as the best of the best, I can't see it doing much, but it does put money in, in the pockets of teachers, and we do want that. And that's the teacher pay raise aside, there have been some much more reckless pay raises to state employees that are not justified. Right now, pending the governor's signature, there are state elected employees getting a 30 to 60% increase in pay. I mean, did you get that kind of pay raise last year for doing what was expected of you? 30 to 60% is huge. So um, the people need to know about it. They need to hold their state, state officials and teachers accountable. Um, and hopefully the governor will not sign off on some of these reckless pay raises now, would that you are at the state level. Would you agree with your colleague that this will at the very least help attract and retain some of the best teachers? I think it stands to uh, gain teachers from other states, no doubt. Um, we had, a, I believe we had about a 25,000 reduction in students in the state. Um, and I, I don't know if we've had that, an equivalent amount of reduction of teachers, but without a doubt, 
we need teachers. We need the best teachers. We need to attract the best teachers. Um, this possibly could do that, uh, bring some from other states, but I wanna motivate the, the teachers that we have and reward and incentivize the teachers that are doing a great job. Uh, you could have paid the best top 10% of the teachers. You could have doubled their pay. Um, that would be more justified than a blanket pay raise, in my opinion. Now, Representative McCray, cutting taxes, increasing teacher pay, so you're, you're taking in less, you're spending more. I know at my house, that's a recipe for disaster. So how does that work with the state? Well, some of our decisions this year have been good. We, and I think once in the last 10 years, we have killed the debt bill, the, the massive bond bill. It's uh, millions and millions of dollars of debt on the backs of the taxpayers for this generation and possibly the next. Um, we we killed that at the last minute this year, which could have affected other decisions that we've made. Um, and let's so, get Representative McCray in here real quick too. What, what do you think about that, Representative? Well, I think the state of Mississippi has uh, <clears throat> received all, since COVID, uh, we've been receiving an excess amount of dollars uh, in which that would uh, compensate because we got infrastructure money that we can use for uh, our, our, our streets, you know, and bridges and stuff. So it won't have to come out our Mississippi budget uh, and uh, the, the ARPA money. I mean, we have so much money floating around so I think it will pretty much take care of itself for a while. All right, money floating around, that's a good problem to have. All right, we have more to talk about. When we come back, we are shifting to the topic of election integrity. We'll talk about Mississippi's new law targeting outside interest and election funding. That's coming up next on Informed Sources. Welcome back to Inform Sources. Election integrity, it's been a hot topic of discussion ever since the 2020 presidential election. Recently, Governor Reeves signed a bill that aims to prevent any agency, state or local officials, from accepting money from the private sector to cover costs associated with elections. The governor specifically called out Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg, who spent more than $400 million in 2020 to offer election grants to local governments across the state. Some Republicans believe it was part of an effort by tech companies to influence the outcome of the election. Representative McCray, do you think outside organizations have been having too much influence on Mississippi politics? Um, I think so. Um, I mean, you, you run an election, you need some money and um, people contribute to your campaign. They've been contributing to campaign for years. Uh, I guess it depends um, be, Depends on um, if they have a motive of giving you this money or whatever. Uh, other motives than running your campaign, I, I can see that would be kind of kind of terrible. But as for con contributing to your campaign, I don't see what's wrong with that. I mean, we report we report money that is given to us. Uh, we report our expenses and stuff. So um, if you do it the right way, you shouldn't have any problems. Now, Representative Williamson, Republicans control almost all of state government there in Mississippi. Do you really think that the money helps stack the deck uh, in favor of Democrats in past elections? Well, I can't really speak to, to that. I, I won my election with probably a record low number and, and, and fundraising. I'll probably have to do a little bit more this next time. But um, I think the, the private sector can and should influence elections. I mean, that's, that's what they're about. But we, 
we don't want the election process itself to be funded in any way by private entities. Um, if that answers your question. Now, if this law extends to banning private funds being used for, say, uh, voter education or voter outreach or even voter registration programs, what impact is that going to have on programs across the state, state trying to get people involved in local and state politics, do you think? Well, being very much a proponent of grassroots efforts and, and grassroots efforts just this past session have been abounding for us in the Mississippi Freedom Caucus. Um, it won't limit us at, at all. It won't limit those grassroots efforts. Um, we had a great election integrity bill that wasn't perfect, but we were able to move it through the process. It was cut and watered down, but ultimately we have ended up with a more stringent requirement during elections regarding citizenship. Representative McRae, do you think that limiting the money will ensure election integrity? No, I don't really think so. I don't think so. Well, do you think this is the key to free and fair elections, or how will this impa be impacted, do you think? Now, when you talk about free and fair elections, uh, I think Mississippi has the fairest uh, election system. We haven't uh, heard any foul foul play going on. Um, and as for, you know, uh, grassrooting, getting out the boat and stuff, you need extra money to pay people to get out and get your vote out. And Representative Williamson, do you think left-leaning billionaires in the past and their social media platforms have been using their money, do you think, to silence conservative voices? There's huge efforts out there funded by um, billion-dollar industries. Uh, that's something we have to face. Uh, yeah, I'm, I am for the small business. I'm for the large business. They all have the right to uh, engage in policy, and they all should. Um, that's, that's really where I stand on that. We need a fair election process um, regulated by the Secretary of State and the rules that we have out there to ensure that those elections are dependable. Everybody wants that. It doesn't matter what party you're in. Um, and as far as the outside sector being private business, local business, public businesses, uh, they all have the right to engage in, in policy matters. You do have to recognize as an elected official that much of what you're seeing, much of the email traffic, many of the phone calls, the majority of them are from out of state. And they have to be distinguished between your constituents and somebody in the game for other other reasons that don't fit your constituents. All right, thank you both for your analysis and perspective on that. Coming up next, we'll have some final thoughts and an informed sources update. Stay with us. Before we go, we have an informed sources update for you. On our last broadcast two weeks ago, we talked about the pipeline bill making its way through the Tennessee General Assembly. Well, last week, the House Commerce Committee passed an amended version of that bill, which would reduce local control over the placement of future pipelines for energy sources like oil and gas. The bill now moves to the House Finance, Ways and Means Subcommittee, where it's scheduled for discussion on Wednesday. The Senate has already passed its version of the bill. We'll keep our eye on that. You know, we 
we covered a lot of ground tonight on some of the big stories impacting your community and your lives. I would like to thank our panel, Mississippi State Representatives Hester Jackson McRae and Brady Williamson. Thank you so much for your analysis, your perspective, your points of view. You certainly are the ultimate informed sources for us there on uh, in the state capitol in Mississippi. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And we want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. We we'll hope you, if you're going to join us for future shows, you certainly can. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Greg Hurst. We hope you have a great night and hope to see you next time on Informed Sources.